do do YouTube? I, I do. The crazy thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sleep in this freezer, so. You did it? Yeah, that's why I bought it, so I can sleep in it. Oh, well, you gonna go viral. Okay, first things first, don't try any of this at home. This is probably the craziest thing that I've ever bought. And now that's out of the way, why am I doing this? I spend a lot of time testing and reviewing gear in real world conditions, and occasionally I get pre-production samples so I can test products before they come to market. Like the new Nemo Tensor Extreme Conditions, this pad is designed to sleep in the coldest temperatures while still being lightweight. The problem is, I'm not going to see extreme condition temperatures until well after this pad is released. So that's where this giant seven foot coffin sized freezer comes in. Coffin sized freezer? Freezer comes in. I hope that's not foreshadowing. I decided to give the new Tensor Extreme pad a good test in a controlled environment where I can compare it to other pads. Plus, sleeping in a freezer just sounds crazy and for good reason. And so, my biggest concern is one, <laughs> suffocating to death, and two, having the right testing environment. You see, pads like the Nemo Tensor Extreme are designed to be used directly on snow. And pads like this are very important in situations like that because your sleeping bag is not able to handle the cold on its own because sleeping bags work when their insulation is lofting. And when you're laying on a sleeping bag, the insulation is not able to loft. But to see if that insulation actually works, we need a really good bed of ice. So I went to the store and picked up 10 bags of ice and then tried pouring water into it to make one giant block of ice, but the water just melted the ice cubes and was taking way too long to refreeze. So I dumped all that out and just went with the ice cubes. So the ice cubes have been in there for a good several days now and have basically become one solid block of ice with no help from me. And my thermometer is saying that it's a cool six degrees Fahrenheit in there. So that takes care of the extreme environment. But what about suffocating? Well, for that, I've decided I'm not gonna close the lid all the way while I'm actually in the freezer, but I'm also concerned about cool air escaping. So I've got these towels that I'm going to line the edges with. Hopefully that will allow enough of a gap that fresh air can get in without letting too much cool air out. And speaking of cold, I've got this Nemo Sonic zero degree sleeping bag. So this ought to keep me nice and warm, even in these extreme conditions. All that's left now is to test it all and make sure that it works. All right, the tensor is in the freezer. Next up is to see if I can fit inside there with it. So the new Tensor Extreme has an R value of 8.5, which is crazy high. And it's a full point higher than the Thermos X-Therm, which the Tensor is seeking to dethrone as having the highest warm to weight ratio. My pre-production model comes in at a weight of just 23.5 ounces, which is the exact same weight as the X-Therm. The question is, can the new Tensor actually perform the way that it claims? You see, one of the problems with these pads is that they are basically built for robots and not people. Pretty much all the pads go through independent testing to get their ASTM certified R values. They load the pad in a machine that has a hot plate on one side and a cold plate on the other. Then they measure how much energy it takes to keep the two plates at the specified temperatures. More energy equals lower R value, less energy equals higher R value. The problem is companies have started buying these machines and then testing and tweaking their pads to get the highest numbers. It's like when your kid's teacher starts teaching for the exam instead of real world conditions. You know, like sleeping in a freezer in your garage. And what I and a few other creators have found is that especially dimpled pads like these allow cold spots to form where cool air can reach your body, making you feel cold in the process. So if you look at this thermal image of the Big Agnes Zoom sleeping pad, you can see that there are cold spots where all the dimples form. The machine may use less energy, but your body can still fill the cold spots. All that's left now is to see if once I spend a significant amount of time in the freezer and my body has had time to bring the top of the pad up to temperature, will I be able to feel any cold spots? Only one way to find out, and that's with a full night in the freezer. So here we go. Okay, so now that I'm in the freezer, I need to tell you about Moose Jaw who made this video possible. When the new Tensor Extreme comes out, you can guarantee that Moose Jaw will have it for sale, as well as all the gear that you need for extreme conditions like this, 
or just regular warm weather backpacking, they have that stuff too. They have all the major brands like Nemo and Big Agnes and Thermarest and MSR and not just backpacking gear. Anything that you want to do outdoors, they've got you covered. If you're into skiing, if you're into mountain biking, if you're into rock climbing, if you're into kayaking, if you're just into plain old camping, they have the gear that you need to be outfitted to do the stuff that you want to do. And just because you're watching me freeze my butt off inside this freezer, you can get 10% off most things that Moose Jaw sells, 5% off things that are already on sale by using the code MLOMJ. That stands for My Life Outdoors and Moose Jaw. Some exclusions do apply. Go check them out at moosejaw.com or through the links in the description. All right, now that I've told you about Moose Jaw, it's time for me to get some sleep. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm probably gonna have to turn off this light. Once I was finally in the freezer, it didn't take long to realize something was seriously wrong. It is a little after 2.30 in the morning. I have gotten up because I feel like something has to be wrong. Like I can just feel so much cold coming through the pad and, and something very strange is happening, something that I completely did not expect. And that is that the upper portion of the freezer is actually quite hot, like so hot that I, I can't get inside the bag completely. But yet the part of my body that is that is up against the pad, even, even though I'm on top of the sleeping bag, that part of my body is so cold. And so if you look at my thermometer that is an, an indoor outdoor thermometer, and so I've got the, the outdoor portion of the thermometer underneath the pad, and the indoor part of the thermometer is just built into this display. It is 11 degrees underneath the pad and it's almost 80 degrees on top of the pad. And so like I'm in this constant state of like burning up but freezing all at the same time. The part of me that's up against the pad is freezing and the part of me that is not up against the pad is burning up and so what I've decided I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tensor out of the freezer and I'm gonna put the Thermarest X-Therm NXT Max in the freezer and I'm gonna see if I can feel the same cold coming through the NXT Max as I feel coming through the Tensor Extreme. And if I do, then I know that there's something, there's something wrong with my setup. And if I don't, then that means there's something wrong with the tensor. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And I'm gonna to try to get a few more hours of sleep and see what happens. I spent the rest of the night sleeping on the X-Therm while trying to determine what was actually going on with my setup. By the time morning came, it was obvious this wasn't working the way I intended. Good morning. Well, that was a really interesting night inside the freezer. I spent the whole night halfway between freezing and burning up and it didn't matter which pad I used, I could still feel cold coming up through the pad, which means it's not the pads and it has something to do with my setup. And I think I might have an idea what it is. So obviously this isn't real world conditions. And at first I thought that it would be better because I can keep conditions consistent between different pieces of gear. But the way this freezer works is Freon is basically running through all these walls, which means that the pad isn't just experiencing cold from the bottom up, but from the sides as well. It's like if I dug a hole in some ice with the perfect size of a pad and then wedged it down in there, which no one is going to do. And I think that's the problem. See, the tensor specifically has four layers of reflective insulation. When the cold is coming from the ground up, it's got to get through all four of these layers. But because the cold was coming from the sides as well, it was able to travel horizontally along these insulating layers and make me feel cold in the process. All that to say, this freezer was a big waste of money and time. But I do have one last thing I can try to see if we can get a good test out of the pad. I've got these ice blocks I made using the freezer. I'm just going to set them straight on the ground with the pad on top to see if I can still feel cold coming up through the pad. Okay, I've been laying on the tensor on top of the ice bed outside of the freezer for a good couple hours now to allow the, my body heat to warm up the pad and not just allow the cold to, to take over. And it is certainly not as bad as what I was feeling last night in the freezer, but I, I do still, especially on my butt, I feel like I can feel some cold coming up through the pad and the zero degree Sonic sleeping bag. It's not 
it's not bad. And, and, and honestly, like I can't say definitively this is a cold pad because I'm not in real world conditions. I'm, I'm literally laying in my garage on a bed of ice cubes that I bought from the store. All that to say, I'm gonna need to get the tensor in real world conditions to actually know if it's going to be a warm pad or not. So time will tell. So then the thousand dollar question is, did I waste my money? Well, at the very least, I think this freezer has helped identify a weakness in the way that pads are currently certified. A hot plate on the top and a cold plate on the bottom in a room temperature room tells us nothing about side insulation. When you are out in real world conditions, you are going to have freezing air coming in contact with the sides of your pad. And as pads get thicker and thicker, it's going to become more of a problem. It's not enough to test top to bottom. We need a standard that also tests side to side. And Maybe if we talk about it enough, we can see some change in the way the industry tests its pads. Until then, I'm just gonna have to wait till it snows again. Thanks for watching this crazy video. If you enjoyed it, I've got a ton more video that I shot, including some behind the scenes stuff that you can access simply by signing up for my emails. This is something new that I'm trying, so if you wanna be one of the first, be sure to sign up through the links in the description. It's gonna be kinda like a Patreon page, but completely free. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching.